Hey guys, Waterfaller41 here, and in today's video, we're gonna be installing a new topper on the bed of my 2020 Ram Rebel. So if you've been following my channel for a while, you know we were kind of playing with the idea of getting a Suburban uh, because we wanted to have a little bit more cargo space, kind of more vertical cargo space, so we could put maybe the dog and, and some of our luggage while being able to cart the kids and their friends in the front of the truck. I decided it's not the time to get a Suburban because just the market sucks and I'm really having a lot of fun with my 2020 Rubble. So what I started doing was looking for a topper for my truck. So you can get fiberglass toppers, aluminum toppers, you can get inflatable toppers, or you can get soft toppers kind of bounced around between all of them, pros and cons of all of them, and ended up with what we have here. So this is the AgriCover Outlander soft topper. So basically this is a canvas topper that will go on the bed of my truck and give me that vertical storage or the increase in vertical storage height in the bed of the truck while keeping everything dry. Beauty of this thing is a few things. One, this is less than a thousand dollars. Every other option that I was looking at is a thousand, fifteen hundred, two grand, sometimes even thirty-five, four thousand dollars, which just wasn't practical for my application. Um, I wanted that dry storage, but I didn't need something that was that um, over the top, um, and this fits my needs perfectly. It's a pretty modular system, so I'll be able to install it. And if I ever want to go back to my tunnel cover, it's very easy to bundle this whole kit back up and then put my tunnel cover back on, uh, so I can flip back and forth uh, between you know, running the soft topper, running my hard tunnel cover, I uh, have that option. And again, less than a thousand dollars, you can't beat this. So let's take a look at what came in the box. Pretty simple. You obviously get the canvas. So this is the canvas topper itself. And then I have some vinyl windows. I left those inside because it's about 15 degrees outside right now. Um, so vinyl windows are a little bit easier to work with when they're room temperature. You have these little metal hoops here. So you got one for each side of the truck. That's the infrastructure or basically the superstructure of the uh, topper itself so it's like the frame that the canvas lays up over then in order to mount that to the bed of the truck just like a tunnel cover it uses rails so there's a rail for each side and then you have the accompanying clamps and these rails just sit right up on top of the bed rail and then you have a bunch of mounting points all along the rail itself which will attach to the bottom of those hoops so what we're gonna do in the garage is first we're gonna set up the two side rails and then we're gonna connect the two uh, sides of the hoops so there's a specific orientation I'll show you as we go ahead and do that and then we're gonna attach these hoops to the rail and then once we do that then I'll pull the truck back into the garage and then we could take the whole frame itself pick it up drop it on top of the bed of the truck and then we could drop the canvas over it and get everything tightened up so it should take about an hour to install this guy I'm doing it by myself um, but it's super simple and because everything's aluminum everything's super light so simple it only takes two tools so one tool we're gonna need is a 9 16 uh, socket, and that's so we could tighten those uh, clamps to the side of the bed. And then the other thing you're gonna need is a hex head, uh, or I guess an Allen head wrench. And that is so we can attach the bottom of the um, Outlander's hoop to the actual rail itself. So All right, so I went ahead and moved everything I didn't need out of the way, so clamps and then those two rails. Got them out of the way for now. We have our bed rail side over here. So this is our driver's side and we have our passenger side. All right, next thing that we went ahead and did is I took the superstructure and I spread it out and I lined it up how it should go. So the first rail, so basically the rail on the furthest part of the topper itself is gonna have this little silver kickstand thing. And that kickstand is gonna go point towards the rear of the truck. So you know you have the right orientation if this is the first rail that you're looking at when it's in respect to the curve section of the bed rail. So I got the kickstand there, also got a kickstand over there. That's what basically ten adds the tension onto the topper itself after you install the canvas on it. So we have that rail, then you got kind of a solid hoop here, and then you got a multi-section link on the front. Once you have everything lined up, make sure that that belt or that webbing that goes all the way across the top is on the top corner. So it's riveted in to the top edges here. You wanna make sure it's up out of the way, it's not tangled up, not twisted up. Make sure it's nice and flat. So then what we're gonna do is take each section and connect them. The way you connect them is super simple. So there's little push pins here. So you got the push pin. This guy just slides right on top of there and then it attaches just like that. There's a little hole right there so you know you installed it the right, uh, the right way. So after we connect those guys all together, then we're gonna bolt it to the bed rails itself. So once we get this guy standing up on his own, I'll show you, but there's a little hex head screws here that just fit right around these little tabs. And then 
use your hex head wrench, tighten them up, and that's what holds this little hoop section to the bed rails, and then we're good to go. All right, now that I have all the hoops connected for each side, uh, I went ahead and pushed everything back because all we need to do now is attach the hoops to each of these tabs. So the tab that's basically in the middle of the bed rail itself is for the rearmost hoop, and that's the one with the kickstand. So it's super simple. Um, they all have these little Allen bolts right here. We're gonna pull that bolt out, and it's gonna be difficult to do it two hands. We're gonna take this, put it on each side of this little tab here, and then throw the screw right through here, and then we're gonna tighten it down. And all right, so the superstructure of our Outlander is complete. So didn't go crazy tight with everything. I just did these guys tight enough that it's not gonna rattle. Again, it's aluminum and plastic that you're screwing to. Doesn't need to be torqued down to 110 foot pounds. It just needs to be tight enough that it's not gonna rattle within the channel itself. Next thing you wanna do is figure out which one of these rails goes where. So there's gonna be a front rail and then there's gonna be a back rail. After you attach these to the canvas, these two rails are what holds the front of the canvas on the front of the structure. And then it's what holds the back of the canvas onto the back of the structure. One of them is longer, one of them is shorter. In the Rams application, the shorter one is gonna to go towards the tailgate. The longer one goes towards the front. You also know it's the right one because the front one here, a little bit skinnier. So you see this little metal channel that's extruded aluminum. That is actually what slips into this little notch here. And then on the back of the structure itself, this fatter portion is what pops into the curved sections here. So it's much wider. So you really can't mess it up, but let's get the truck pulled in and then get the structure here dropped up on top of it. Then we're gonna take our clamps right here and then we're gonna attach these guys onto the bracket or the, onto the rails itself to the truck. So basically these pinch, just like a regular tunnel cover does, these will pinch the rail onto the bed rail. All right, so I'm standing in the bed of my truck. I got that superstructure here already laid up on top of the bed rails, uh, just loosely up here. Pretty easy to do, it's super light. Uh, next thing we gotta do is go ahead and attach these clamps. Um, so the clamps themselves, this is the top right here, and then the bottom, this part goes up underneath the bed rail. This part is what clamps onto the rail of the Outlander itself, and you can see there's grooves all along here. This portion goes into the grooves. So you want the front ones as far forward as possible, you want the rear brackets as far back as possible. So uh, what they recommend is finger tight these guys right now just to hold it onto the bed. And then after we get the canvas on there, go back and tighten everything down to 10 foot pounds so everything holds into place. Then the next thing we need to do is take the, this is the front rail. Then I had the back rail there. This gets all, all of this stuff gets attached to the canvas. Canvas lays up on top of this. And that will dictate kind of how wide everything is because this bar fits inside of a channel there and that channel gets bolted down, um, but that channel is only one width. So once we have that bar set up and installed there, then we know how far apart each side is gonna be. Same thing for the rear. So something the instructions doesn't call out, but if you look really closely, let's get a little bit closer here. You see there's this little aluminum uh, grooved piece. It basically looks like the side of the bed rails, but it's an extension. And what that there, what's that? What that is there to do is because of how wide the bed is on the uh, the ram here, it gives you a surface for the clamp to bite in. If you try to attach this guy right to here, the bed or the canvas topper itself is gonna be too skinny. So this allows you to push the front of the topper out to the sides so it's wide enough to fit the canvas. There is not one on the rear that just attaches right to the rails. Again, I'm not totally sure in terms of how wide everything is. Ultimately, what will dictate that is the, um, the canvas itself. So the canvas and the front and back rails. Before we do that, what we need to do is install that piece of weather stripping all across the bulkhead here. So they give you a nice solid strip of uh, weather stripping here. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the provided alcohol wipes, clean this off and then stick it on there. And then that's what the, old, the rail sits on on the front. So it gives it a nice weatherproof seal on the bulkhead of the truck. And then, so you see it, you got some, I think those are half inch bolts here. So once we attach this rail here, to the canvas and it pops in, it basically slides into this little channel here. Then you tighten this down to hold it into place. All right, so there's a quick look at the, the I guess the substructure of the bed cover itself. Let's get this guy out of there. Brief overview, we got our brackets right here, hand tightened, that's the rear one. We have the front ones up here. We got some straps here. This is so when we pull everything forward, if we ever wanna drive with the bed open, 
Uh, this straps everything down on the sides. We have everything taut down here. So now the next thing we need to do is go get the canvas and then we need to install, this is the rear rail, rear rail. And you can see there's some channeling here. There's a tube that's installed on the canvas that this is gonna slide on. So this will be the front. And ultimately that piece is gonna drop right into this little opening right here. Now I see this opening is a tad deformed, so it's gonna be a little tricky to get it in there, but with some heat, it'll probably be perfectly fine. Once we get it in there, we're gonna tighten these half inch bolts down. There's one on this side, one on the other side. You can see our weather stripping, we're good to go. Nice weather seal. Um, so like I said, these this cross rail is gonna dictate how wide the actual topper itself is. Um, so we might be pushing things in a little bit. We might be pulling it apart to fit that rail. It's gonna take some monkeying around, but ultimately what's gonna happen is I would pull the truck out of the garage so we have room to access everything. All right, so we have our canvas laid out ready to go. We know it's oriented the right way because the window that's attached to the canvas is actually the window that will go on the front of the topper, which is up against the cab of the truck. So if we arrange it this way, it's gonna make things a lot easier. So first thing we're gonna wanna do is obviously unroll it and then prepare it for installing that back rail. So if you look closely here, there's a little plastic tube right there that's inside the edge of the canvas. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna give you a little piece of fabric to slide that back rail on. So like I said earlier, this rail has notches, right? So there's a little round notch. This round notch is what threads onto that little plastic tube that goes all the way across because this is ultimately what you're gonna to use to install the topper onto the front lower corner of the rail itself. There. So let's go ahead and get this guy slid onto the window. I'll show you the orientation so you got everything aligned. And then we should be good to then take this guy and drop it on top of the, the frame itself and start buckling everything down. Then all the hard stuff is done. So let's get to it. All right, so just for sake of orientation, the topper itself is upside down but it's also backwards. So this is the front of the portion, or this is the portion of the topper that's gonna to go up against the cab of the truck. This will help us, orienting it like this is gonna help us drop it on top. But I already had, went ahead and got that rail installed. Ultimately what this is gonna do is it's gonna pop into those little notches on the front of the rail, and that's what holds the front taut. Then you're gonna pull everything back, clip it on the sides, and we'll be good to go. All right, so we got everything situated, and I will say this is probably the hardest part of the whole install but it's very doable. So we got that rail slid in there. You can see it's popped into the channel right there. Uh, I had to use a mallet on one side. The easiest thing I used was I just undid the front brackets. So I undid the front bracket on the side that I was working on so I could pull it off, get a little mallet to knock it in so it's nice and seated in there. And then you have that half inch bolt right there that you just tighten down. So it's this guy right here. Tighten that down, that'll hold the bracket into place. Then add the bracket back on this side, go back on the other side and do it. Uh, so now that we got the front portion done, we're gonna go to do the same thing on the rear. So we have to slide that channel uh, onto the rear portion of the cover itself, and then that just pops right into here. Once we do that, then we can go ahead and put the windows in, tighten all the clamps down, and we're good to go. Before we're gonna go do the back rail, we're gonna go up to the front. There's some hook and loop right here, so some Velcro, that we're gonna Velcro onto that rail. Um, every rail has a its own little sleeve that attaches to it, so everything stays nice and situated. All right, before we get situated with the rear door here, rear window, I went ahead and did all the Velcro. So there's Velcro on each of the hoops that go across uh, the length or the width of the bed. So now that those are all done, we can turn our attention to the rear window. You should have three vinyl windows that come in the kit. I got the two sides over there. This is the rear one. You know it's the rear because it literally looks like the back window of a pickup truck. So once you get this guy separated, you wanna go ahead and grab that front rail. And just like you did with the front rail, it's gonna slide right onto that rod and fabric um, and hold on, or that's how the aluminum channel or aluminum bar attaches to the bottom of the rear window. So now the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and zipper this guy to the frame. So there's a zipper across the top and then one down on each side. So you got the zipper side here. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. It'll hang down and then we're ultimately gonna take this channel or this little piece of bar and that's what's gonna pop right into this little groove here. All right, so we got the window zipped in and then the bracket pop right in. Uh, does take a little bit of force to pull it down, but that's how the suspension infrastructure parts actually work. Uh, so if you're familiar with Jeeps, it's the same way. Uh, so everything's zipped in for right now. We're gonna get everything situated once we start getting all the uh, 
the rest of the windows on. But there is some Velcro here on the bottom of the zipper. That way you can Velcro and close that off. Uh, window looks nice. Everything's starting to really take the nice shape of the Outlander. So my understanding is you could drive it uh, minus the window, but you could drive it with just the frame and that's called the Expedition. Um, or you could take everything and roll it all forward because it's snowing outside and I wanna keep my kids hockey stuff nice and dry. We're gonna go ahead and do the side windows next. After the side windows, it's time to throw this guy on there and then we'll do these little side clips. So there's plastic on each corner and it goes around these little corner things and that's what keeps everything taut. All right, so got the side windows on set up, almost done. I just need to take this little piece of plastic and slip it underneath this channel. Basically it's like seat covers, you gotta pull it down a little bit. I might need to have my wife pull on just a tad to get it sit situated. There's also that on the corner here. Um, but as far as the windows themselves, the sides are tinted. The back one is not, and I suspect it's because obviously you want to be able to see out the back window. Uh, but everything's coming together nicely. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do here in the next minute or so is take this plastic tab, get it situated here, um, and then we'll go inside the bed, take the kickstand, and then install that guy in a second. All right, so we got all the windows situated. Man, was this thing a bear? But that's why they say do this in 60 degree or up weather for best results because canvas is a lot easier to work with. But I do have everything cinched down. Let's get that Velcro pushed down. Everything is super taut. And the last thing we gotta do is go ahead and pull our kickstand straight. So I already attached it with the wing nut. All I gotta do is push it and that's a pop pin and it'll pop right into place. So let's get everything put back together and then I gotta run my kids to hockey. But tomorrow we'll take a look at everything out in the daylight and see what everything looks like. All right, friends, so we are out in the open and we can finally take a look at the topper. Uh, so the Outlander looks absolutely awesome on the truck. So the sides, like I said, the side windows are tinted. Pretty difficult to see inside. You gotta get real close, but obviously you still can. The rear window is clear. So you could see through uh, from the rear view mirror. Now in full transparency, the truck is super dirty. Uh, it's been snowing and it's also been like 10, 15 degrees. So there's absolutely no car washes open right now. So can't get a wash, but the soft toppers are good to go for the touchless car wash. So you can go through those uh, and it's gonna keep everything dry inside. So that is the topper itself. So let's go ahead and open up the tailgate. So there's the inside of the truck. So, ton, absolute ton of room inside. I didn't even think about how much room it was actually adding until you get the topper on there and you realize what you've added that much more dry storage space to the bed of the truck. So awesome, love it. It's been working out really well for uh, hauling all the cargo and all the kids hockey stuff all over the place. So let's talk about my top five takeaways from installing this guy. Uh, so first and foremost, it looks awesome. Keeps everything dry. Um, absolutely zero wind noise. I know one of the concerns when you have a uh, something in the back of the truck like this with kind of odd shapes, it's gonna cause some excess wind noise, but absolutely zero wind noise on the truck. You know, it, what more could you ask for? You add that much more cargo space, you kind of feel like you're gonna give up some things, but you really don't from the, from the noise aspect. But again, I think it looks awesome, nice rugged look, uh, but looks very well on the Rebel itself. Um, it's super easy to see out the back. So that was one of the things I was concerned about. I've never had a topper on a truck, on any of the trucks that I've owned. So I wasn't so sure how easy it would be to see out the back window, but it's very easy. Takeaway number two, uh, this is an installation tip. Try to do it when it's as warm as possible out. Um, like I said, I'm doing this in the middle of winter. Uh, kind of suck to install um, because over time that material, even though I kept it inside before the installation, it did get really cold and rigid. It was a little bit difficult to install, but um, you know I got everything installed, but the warmer this stuff is, it goes with boat bimini tops as well, or boat vinyl. The warmer it is outside, the easier it is because this stuff is a little bit more malleable and easier to work with. It's not impossible. It would, just took a little bit longer probably to do it, particularly this section. So the clips that are at the bottom of the windows took a little bit longer because things weren't as flexible. Again, I'm doing this in 10, 15 degree weather. Um, in hindsight, what I would have done or what I would recommend is if you have a heater, run the heater in the garage while you're doing this and it'll make things a lot easier to get installed. Again, not super impossible, but it just made things just a tad difficult. And they do say this in some of their videos that you know try to install this when it's 60 degrees or up. Um, it's pretty cold and it's gonna be a long time till it's 60 degrees. So I wanted it on my truck sooner than later, so I bit the bullet and just went ahead and did it. 
Takeaway number three, uh, and this is more of a care tip, vinyl windows are fragile. You gotta be careful with these things, uh, particularly with what cleaning products you use. Uh, so don't be using any sort of Windex, ammonia, or bleach or anything like that. There's a bunch of vinyl specific chemicals out there and boat people can attest to this. You wanna use that because if you use the wrong cleaner on the vinyl, you're not only gonna scratch it, but you're also gonna start to, over time, eat away at the vinyl and it's gonna get really rigid, it's gonna get fogged up, and it's not gonna look as good as it possibly can. So use a vinyl specific cleaner. Uh, that's the easiest way to avoid that. Then when you're taking these guys off, Again, boat people can attest to this. If you're taking this stuff off, be careful with where you're putting it. You can't just throw it on the garage floor. Uh, stones are gonna scratch the stuff. It's soft, it's vinyl, you know, it's gonna scratch easily. Um, but what you can do is, so you have basically three windows that come off, you have both sides and then you have the back. Get bed sheets. So put this down, put a towel or bed sheet in between it, put the next one down, towel or bed sheet, next one down. That way you have some sort of fabric in between them because vinyl on top of vinyl is gonna scratch. Takeaway number four, the price tag on this is less than $1,000. You cannot beat how much storage you're getting and the functionality of this guy for less than $1,000. Every other option is $1,500 and up. Um, to me, this is perfect for my application. Like I said, I'm gonna be using this for a lot of our fishing trips, our tailgating trips up to NASCAR, and really all of our summer trips up to the summer home. Adding that vertical dry storage while keeping it within the constraints of my bed is exactly what I needed for my fishing poles, for hockey sticks and everything. And like I said, there's tons and tons of storage inside, regardless of having a topper on top of it. Now, the bad thing about this is this means when I go on my fishing trip to, let's say, Boundary Waters uh, this spring, we're probably gonna bring way more crap than we actually need because we have all the room to store everything. All right, last and certainly not least, um, my truck has a three inch lift on it. One of the concerns I had, and I couldn't get much information on the height of the Outlander was, will this fit in my garage? Because I know some toppers, even though they say they're cab high, go just a smidge over the cab. Uh, truck fits perfectly fine with this because the, the topper itself is actually just below the antenna on the top of the cab. So it does fit in the garage and it doesn't increase the height of the truck any bit. That is the installation and my two cents on the uh, AgriCover Outlander soft topper for the 2019 and newer Ram trucks. I know they have a bunch of model numbers out. Installation is super easy. Like I said, the best thing you could do is wait for warmer weather, but if you can't, it is very much doable in cold weather. Um, just gotta take your time and accept the fact that you're gonna be fighting with the vinyl just a tad to get everything installed. Thank you very much for watching my video. Appreciate it. Leave any sort of questions, comments, or uh, just general products you think we should be looking at next down in the description below. But with that said, thank you very much for watching. Bye.